40 months of Rahm Emanuel. That's how long the mayor has now been in office. He faces re-election next year. This morning, we're going to try and write the first draft of history on the Emanuel administration. We're going to try anyway. And fortunately, we have an author in studio. He's a good one, too, Keith Koneman. He wrote the book, First Son, a biography of Mayor Richard M. Daley. And just ahead, Keith, I want to get an update to that book. But let's start with our current mayor. If you were drafting a book about Rahm Emanuel's time as mayor so far, what would that thesis be? Well, Jeff, I think you'd have to say beware of following a legend in office. It's a very tricky thing to do. It's very hard to make people happy. And if you look at Chicago history, uh, there's a precedence for this. Uh, Jane Byrne and Michael Balandic, yeah. very difficult time fo following the first mayor daily. Eugene Sawyer, very, very difficult time following Harold Washington. And the real reason for that is because it's hard to keep uh, sort of a, a political coalition together in a city as diverse as Chicago. It's hard for a new mayor to demand the deep political loyalties that an old mayor has and some groups just uh, that were maybe quiet under a previous mayor uh, they sort of rise up and get more vocal and you've seen that with uh, Emanuel's administration yeah. both with the teachers union and the black community they've really um, showed a little bit of unhappiness here uh, with Emanuel. If you had a grade uh, Emanuel so far what, what would that grade be? Well, I'd give him an incomplete. Uh, there's still a lot of uh, work for him to do. And the, he, he's actually tried to tackle some big, important issues, things like improving schools, getting our fiscal housing ordering, reforming pensions, lowering corruption. Uh, but uh, yeah, a lot of that work is still done. The only sort of clear-cut success, I would say, so far is uh, on cleaning up co corruption. And uh, Emmanuel's done a nice job with that. But on the other issues, they're, they're, they're still uh, incomplete so far. So you give him an incomplete. He does face re-election. Early right. next year. What are his chances of being reelected as mayor? What do you think? Well, uh, he, he's a, a tough and seasoned guy, and so his election chances are good. But if you okay. break it down, um, you have Bob Fioretti, uh, who's declared his candidacy, you know, his, his chances of being elected are, are low. Uh, you know, like most people in the city council, he's got a small political base, not much fundraising power, and it's been very rare in Chicago history for some of the city council to get elected mayor. Karen Lewis, right. Karen Lewis however, uh, has chances of giving Rahm a real fight. Um, the issue for her and the challenge for her is uh, representing herself as someone who's for all Chicagoans as opposed to a, a, a narrow political constituency. If Karen were really smart, what she would do is she'd bring in an, a, another candidate, someone who's a pro-business candidate. If a pro-business candidate ran to the right of Rahm and Karen Lewis ran to the left of Rahm, now that would be a real political battle. You know, some people say that Rahm Emanuel has a likability problem. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? There's no question that Ron has a likability uh, problem, okay. and, and there's, there's two reasons for it, and, and they're different. One is his interactions, uh, sort of small interactions with everyday Chicagoans, and the other is his uh, public style of governing. Um, so with regard to his interactions with sort of like regular Joes, like not powerful people, Ron comes off as very brusque very yeah. abrupt, like he'd rather be talking to someone else. And, uh, you know, that might fly in Washington, D.C. or New York. That does not fly in Chicago. Because if you do that to a regular guy in Chicago, he tells his friends. And his friends tell his friends. So that's Rahm's first problem. Yeah. And then with regard to his political style of public leadership, he's sort of like an ambitious, driven man who gets a lot done, um, which is admirable. But it doesn't make you particularly likable because sometimes you sort of like run people over yeah. when you're getting things done. All right, let's 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 talk about uh, Mayor Daley now. Yeah. Hey, what has he been doing since since he left office? Um, so he's uh, he's been busy. Okay. Um, you know, he's uh, involved with uh, practicing law. He has a, a, a business called Tur Partners, which is like a financial development business. I think you have to give him credit for like not interfering uh, with his successor. He's he's kept a very low profile about not pub, uh, publicly commenting what his successor did. And I think you have to give him credit for that. He's had some health problems right. recently. Well, I want to touch upon that. You know, there have been some reports yeah. that his health isn't, isn't right. so well right now. What do you know about that? Uh, my understanding is that, you know, he was in intensive care for nearly a week, which is obviously right. very serious. And since then, he's uh, canceled a lot of uh, meetings and a lot of public speaking and games and, and kept a very, very low profile. So my guess is uh, his health problems are serious. All right. What's next for you? Well, right now I'm writing a novel uh, okay. called Never Ask About the First Million. Um, and <laughs> okay. It's about a uh, family that emigrated to Chicago 100 years ago, and so it's about family history and identity. Wow, all right. So taking a little break from politics, and then after I do that, I might not write another uh, political book. Do we, see, do we see a book about Rahm in the future, perhaps? Well, he's do a very interesting character, and so I would uh, have to seriously yeah. consider it. All right. Uh, political historian Keith Koneman, thank you so much. Thank Author you. of the book First Son. Thanks for being here. All right, coming up next, a three-letter word for trouble, NFL.
You're watching Fox 32 Sunday.